Shalom and welcome everyone. My name is Tony Pino and today we are going to be looking at a particular verse in Yeshiahu, Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6. And I'm going to be sharing with you on the particular part of the passage that states that all of your righteousness is as filthy rags. Now, when this verse is often quoted within sermons or within, you know, ministering the gospel to someone or videos or whatnot, we have to look at it in its proper context, because sometimes it's not being used in its proper context. So today we're going to look at what did Isaiah mean when he said, all of your righteousness is as filthy rags. People will use this for believers, non-believers, and just let them know, hey, all your righteousness is as filthy rags. Just, just keep that in mind. And of course, usually it's within the context of if you think you can earn your salvation by adding something to what Yeshua did on the cross, all of your righteousness is as filthy rags. Just remember. And again, they're saying that to believers or non-believers. So let's go ahead and look at the verse and see, are they using it properly? All right. So here we are in Isaiah 64. We're mainly going to be focusing on verses one through six. Uh, and then we're going to be looking at some other uh, verses in other places also. Now, the context of what is being said here by Isaiah is that both the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Israel have been scattered. Okay. The northern kingdom, which made up the 10 tribes, which was called the kingdom of Israel, uh, they had been scattered long before this. All right. The Assyrians came in, their disobedience to the covenant of Sinai, Yahweh scattered them. And so they had two places of worship. They had golden calves set up. They never had a righteous king. And they constantly worshiped the deities of the other nations, along with trying to worship Yahweh. And they made up their entire own system. They had their own places of worship where they would worship Yahweh. Again, two places. Uh, they did not, in general, come down to where Yahweh said he placed his name in Yerushalayim. The kings wanted all of his kingdom the northern kingdom to worship in the places that they had set up. So there was massive violation of the Sinai covenant. And so they were scattered. The southern kingdom had the right place of worship, had the priests in place. Okay. We're doing the offerings. We're claiming to be doing the Sinai covenant, the Torah, but they also worship the other deities. So we are talking about believers who are in a covenant relationship with Yahweh, who were saved by grace, okay? Israel, all 12 tribes, along with the mixed multitude that left with them, that joined themselves to Israel, were saved by grace. They did no good works to earn their redemption out of Egypt. And then they were given the Sinai covenant. They came into the kingdom relationship with Yahweh, a marriage relationship. And so they promised, obviously, to walk in Yahweh's ways. And so these are believers that are breaking the covenant, all right? One foot in the world, we would say, and one foot out, okay? They may be doing some Torah commands, but then, of course, they were living the ways of the world. And so in Yahweh's eyes, that is not following the covenant. There are many warnings against idolatry and how idolatry moves you into many other sins that violate the commandments of Yahweh. And so the temple was destroyed. Nebuchadnezzar came in, the Babylonian uh, army came in and destroyed the temple. So Isaiah is giving them a word. And let's go ahead and begin with verse one. Oh, that you would rent the heavens, that you would come down, that the mountains might shake at your presence, as fire burns bushwood, as fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries that the nations may tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things for which we did not look, you came down. The mountains shook at your presence. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen any God besides you, who acts for the one who waits for him. You meet him who rejoices and does righteousness, who remembers you in your ways. You are indeed angry, for we have sinned. In these ways we continue, and we need to be saved. But you, uh, sorry, but we are all like an unclean thing. 
and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf, and our iniquity, like the wind, have taken us away. Amen. So, in the context here, we can see that Isaiah is letting Israel know that they are breaking the covenant. He is crying out to the Lord to save them. Okay. And they need saving. Now, verse five makes it very clear that you meet with him who rejoices and does righteousness. Okay. Was Isaiah a righteous prophet? Did not Yahweh meet with Isaiah? Yes, he meets with those who do righteousness. Was Isaiah a covenant faithful person? Absolutely, he was. And so uh, was, all of, was all of Isaiah's righteousness as filthy rags to Yahweh? No, he's following the covenant, right? He meets with them. He meets with those who do righteous. And this is before Yeshua, all right? There were prophets that walked in righteousness. There were uh, people within the nation of Israel that did walk in righteousness. But as a whole, the majority of the nation of Israel did not. The majority, especially the leadership of Israel, okay, they had one foot in the world and one foot out. And so the context here is when Isaiah says, but we are all like an unclean thing and all our righteousness are like filthy rags, he is speaking as the nation as a whole, okay? And so as a whole, they are not following the ways, mainly because of what? The leadership. The leadership is not leading the people. Okay, the leadership is not instituting the Torah properly. They are worshiping other deities along with trying to follow Yahweh. So yes, the righteous deeds that they did, all those acts of doing the Torah are as filthy rags because they have one foot in the world also. They're turning around and worshiping other deities also. And so this is definitely in the context of someone who has a relationship with Yahweh, made a covenant promise that they would follow his ways. They've received grace as a nation here, uh, but they're not keeping up their end of the deal. They're not keeping up their end of the bargain, right? And they were supposed to follow the Torah. Now, the Torah, within the Torah, there are all types of ways that Yahweh says, this is how you repent. This is what you need to do in this situation or that situation to come back to me. So within the Torah, there was ways that you could turn around and come back to Yahweh if you broke his Torah. They're not doing that here. They've got one foot in, one foot out. And so all of their righteousness are like filthy rags. So we don't want to give the impression that the Torah was something that nobody could follow. Okay. Isaiah was righteous. Okay, there were uh, Daniel was righteous. There are people that followed the Torah, which would include forgiveness of sin. They they repented when and they turned and they did what Yahweh required of them when it came to repenting, when it came to the time where they violated the Torah. So, were their righteousness as filthy rags to Yahweh? No, if they're walking in the covenant. He says he will meet and rejoice with those who do righteous. So there are situations where your righteousness is as a filthy rag to Yahweh, and there are situations where it is not, that your righteousness honors Yahweh, amen, the deeds that you do, the works that you do, okay? So we just have to be careful on how this verse is being used and what context it's being used. Now, oftentimes, the context of which someone is trying to use it is, you cannot add any good works to your salvation. You cannot add a righteous deed that would earn you favor to give you eternal life, all right? In that context, sure, that's true. That is absolutely true. I don't think anyone would argue with that, that what Yeshua did on the cross is how you enter the kingdom. It's salvation by grace. It's the exact same thing that happened with Israel out of Egypt. They were saved by grace. It's an act of mercy by Yahweh, and that we come to uh, Yeshua by faith, we come to Yahweh by faith, we put our faith in his work. Israel was put to faith in the work that Yahweh did when he took them out of Egypt, which I believe was by Yeshua. He was the angel of Yahweh. And so Yeshua saved them there, and he's saving them on the cross. He's saving the world on the cross. You can't add to that, okay? You can put your faith in it and begin to walk in it. And as you're walking in the covenant, 
it's very clear in passages five and six, if you are walking in the covenant, you are walking in righteousness, he will meet with you. But if you choose not to walk in righteousness, you choose to walk in the ways of the world and try and do some righteous deeds. If you are split, then your righteousness is as filthy rags to him. That is the context from which we want to see this. Amen. So let's go ahead and continue here. We want to go to Ezekiel, just to let you know, there were people who would who could turn and walk in righteousness. Uh, Yahweh expected them to, okay, turn. That's why he gave them the Torah. The Torah would show you how to turn and begin to follow him. Not only did it show you how to follow him, but the Torah teaches you how to turn and come back to him. And so this is what the prophet Ezekiel is sharing here. In verse 19, he states, yet you say, why should the son bear the guilt of the father? Because the son has done what is lawful and right and has kept all of my statutes and observed them he shall surely live, all right? So in this time, there was um, this discussion going on that, hey, if the father sins, does the guilt of the, the sins of the father get passed to the son, okay? And the answer to that is no, okay? And if the son sins, is his guilt passed to the father? The answer to that is no, okay? The guilt of a sin cannot be passed to another person. Okay, if the father sins, but the son does what is lawful and right, he shall live. You have a free will choice. Okay, and so verse 20, the soul who sins shall die. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father, nor the father bear the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Amen. Can you walk in righteousness? Yes, you can. Can you be a righteous person in the eyes of Yahweh? Yes, you can. If you're walking in the covenant, which what? What would that include? Your faith in Yahweh. Okay. Your faith in Yahweh is what is encouraging you to walk in the covenant, to walk in righteousness, to walk in obedience. And he says he will meet with those who are righteous. And so, yes, in the time, even before Yeshua, they had the ability, they had the opportunity to walk in righteousness. All right, verse 21, but if a wicked man turns from all his sins, which he committed, keeps all my statutes and does what is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die, amen? So by walking in faith, this is an expression of faith right here, okay? Did the wicked person have the ability to turn from his sins? He did, and the Torah made a way for that. The Torah made a way for you to repent and turn and come in to the father come into a relationship with Yahweh. Amen. And so then of course your sins would be totally exterminated, totally done with, with the blood of Yeshua. All right. This system here, the offering system of the Levitical priesthood, the Sinai covenant, it made a way for you to stay in white relationship with Yahweh. Uh, and it covered your sins, but it never permanently took away your sins. So, uh, but it's all about faith, isn't it? It's about walking in faith. So verse 22, none of the transgressions which he has committed shall be remembered against him because of the righteousness which he has done, he shall live. Do I have any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, says the Lord uh, God, says Yahweh, and not that he tur should turn from his ways and live. It's, it's Yahweh's desire for you to turn. Amen. It's Yahweh's desire for you to turn and live. Okay. And that means coming into a relationship with him. We are speaking of people who are in a covenant relationship with Yahweh, who received mercy as a nation, okay? Now, we have to be careful that we just don't make these blanket statements upon people, okay? Oftentimes, there are laws passed in America, and it can be said, well, America is walking this way, okay? Uh, America is doing this, the, and, and the law uh, does not reflect the heart of every person in, the, in America, Okay. There are certain laws that have been passed that not every American believes that that is a righteous law, that that should be done. So we have to be careful. The leadership sets the tone and a nation can be judged by Yahweh, even though there are a remnant of righteous people in there, the nation can be judged as a whole. So we have to be careful again, how we interpret uh, things that are being said about a nation versus individuals. Okay. 
that is another thing you have to be careful of in which we are seeing here today. We're seeing individuals can walk in righteousness. We're seeing that Israel as a whole, because of the leadership, were judged for their unfaithfulness to the covenant and all their righteousness was as filthy rags. And this is being said as a na- to a nation, to a people as a whole. Okay. And so we just have to be careful. So verse 24, but when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and does according to all the abominations that the wicked man does, shall he live? All the righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered because of the unfaithfulness of which he is guilty and the sin which he committed because of them, he shall die. Okay. You're not walking in repentance. You're not walking in the Torah. The Torah had the means for you to repent and turn. You can turn from your righteousness, okay? And then, of course, your righteousness will be as filthy rags to Yahweh, okay? They will not be remembered because you now are walking in unfaithfulness. Yet you say the way of Yahweh is not fair. Hear now, O house of Israel, okay? This is speaking to the northern tribes here. It is not my way which is fair and your ways which are not fair. When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity, and dies in it, it is because of the iniquity which he has done that he dies. Again, when a man, a wicked man, turns away from the wickedness which he committed and does what is lawful and right, he preserves himself alive because he considers and turns away from all the transgressions which he committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says the way of Yahweh is not fair. O house of Israel, is it not my ways which are fair and your ways which are not fair? Okay. So the northern tribe is going to be scattered for its wickedness. They could have repented. They could have turned. Each person in there could have turned, but they chose not to. Okay. They had the ability to turn, but they chose not to. All right. So in Deuteronomy chapter 6, We're going to start with verse 16 and see how righteousness is used here. Now, verse 16, you shall not tempt Yahweh, your Elohim, as you tempted him in Massah. You shall diligently keep the commandments of Yahweh, your Elohim, his testimonies and his statutes, which he has commanded you. And you shall do what is right and good in the sight of Yahweh, that it may be well with you and that you may go and possess the good land of which Yahweh swore to your fathers to cast out all your enemies from before you as Yahweh has spoken. So there is a contingency here in the relationship with Yahweh, all right? He saved them by grace. There's no question about that. They could not add or take away of anything that Yahweh did. He saved them by his mercy, but now they're in a relationship with Yahweh where they have responsibilities. They can diligently keep the commandments because there is a means of forgiveness when they sin. So they can maintain the relationship with Yahweh. They can obey his commandments if they choose to do so, okay? But if they don't, there's consequences. Verse 20, when your sons ask you in time to come saying, what is the meaning of the testimonies, the statutes, and the judgments which Yahweh our Elohim has commanded you, then you shall say to your son, we were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, and Yahweh brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. That's Yeshua right there. And Yahweh showed signs and wonders before our eyes, great and severe against Egypt, Pharaoh and all his household. Then he brought us out from there that he might bring us in to give us the land of which he swore to our fathers. And Yahweh commanded us to observe all these statutes, to fear Yahweh, our Elohim, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive. And it is this day then it will be righteousness for us if we are careful to observe all these commandments before Yahweh, our Elohim, as he has commanded us. So they have the ability, and it will be righteousness for them if they walk in his statutes and his ways. So is there a righteousness you do that honors Yahweh and is good? Yes, absolutely. Does this mean all your righteousness is as filthy rags to Yahweh? No. When you are walking in right relationship with Yahweh, your righteousness pleases him. It is your righteousness. Okay. It is you walking in the covenant that you promised to uphold. And that is what was given to Israel. Israel had the ability to do that. They had the free choice to do it. 
All right, let's move to James chapter two. James chapter two. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Okay? Israel cannot maintain the relationship with Yahweh after being saved by grace if they do not walk in righteousness. Okay? God does not set you up for failure. Yahweh does not set you up for failure. So you are to walk in the righteous acts of Yahweh. That is an expression of your faith. That is an expression of your faith. It is impossible to have faith in not good works. Okay, that is impossible because faith is an action. Okay, emuna in Hebrew, it is an action. It is an expression, something you do. You cannot have faith in Yeshua and not do any good works not do any deeds of righteousness, okay? Verse 18, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. So show me your works without faith. That's, that's what? That's righteous deeds. And if it doesn't have faith, now they are as filthy rags to Yahweh, okay? If you do not do those for the purpose of Yeshua, following him, making him king, then those works mean nothing. If you are having one foot in the world and one foot in Yeshua, that's not being faithful to Yeshua. That's walking in unfaithfulness. Your works, though they may be good, are, un, are as filthy rags to Yahweh, whether you're a believer or an unbeliever. Walking in faith means you are dedicated to the covenant relationship that Yeshua brought you into. Amen. His work on the cross brought you in by grace into the covenant. And now what? You walk by faith. And so faith without works, we're going to see is dead. Verse 19, you believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham, our father, justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar? Okay. Abraham had faith in Yahweh. The justification came when? When he followed the command, when he did the work that showed his faith, that showed the true intent of his heart. Okay. All you got to do is go to Genesis, Bershit, chapter 26, verse 5. Abraham followed all the instructions, the Torah oat, okay, the plural form of Torah of Yahweh which would have meant repenting, would have involved repenting. Nobody is saying Abraham was sinless, okay? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by works, faith was made perfect, right? How are you made perfect? You need to walk in holiness. You need to obey the covenant relationship with Yeshua, all right? There, it's his it's his commandments, okay? And it's his blessing on those commandments. So this is how you are perfected. When you walk in obedience, which means humbling yourself and submitting, which means denying self and walking after Yeshua, okay? Obeying the law of Moshe, because that's what Yeshua taught. That's where we have even to know what good works are. We have the law of Moshe, which we have the example of Yeshua who perfectly walked the Torah. So. The works that you are faithfully walking in are perfecting you. It's how the Holy Spirit is conforming you to the image of Yeshua. Those are not filthy rags to Yahweh, okay? Because you don't have one foot in the world and one foot out. And so as, and the scripture, verse 23, and the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness, okay? He showed by his actions, he had already been living with Yahweh in a relationship with him for many years when this verse that is being quoted in Genesis happened, okay? So it wasn't just some mental belief. He had already been showing him by his works that he was faithful to Yahweh, that he truly trusted Yahweh, okay? And so it says here, and he was called the friend of God. 
you see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. In other words, you can't say you have faith in Yahweh and no works, faith in Yeshua and no works. You can't have one foot in the world and one foot out. Then your righteousness is as filthy rags. Okay. And so is there a place in a believer's life where they have righteousness? Yes. Where they are walking in righteousness? Yes. Even before Yeshua came. Okay. There were people in the Tanakh, in the Hebrew scriptures who were righteous. Why? They walked in faith and their faith was what justified them in their faith, their works, their works showed their faith. Okay. It's a matter of understanding the Hebrew scriptures in its proper context. And so are we saying that works save you? Is that what we're saying? Well, if you're going to say works save you outside of Yeshua, then no, your righteousness is as filthy rags. But when you put works in the context of someone who walks in faithfulness to the covenant, after they have received grace to come in the covenant, do their works save them? Yes. They're walking in righteousness. They're showing that they are justified. Okay. That means they're not trusting in themselves. That means they're trusting in Yahweh. That's what faith is, is not trusting in self, but trusting in Yahweh. We do the works of the covenant because I trust and love Yeshua. He is my savior. He is my king. He died for me. And so I want to be faithful to him. Amen. Just like in a marriage, each person needs to be faithful to their spouse. And that is shown and they are justified by their works. Okay. They came into the covenant and made vows to one another. And how do we know that they are keeping their vows? By their works. And so in one context, works does not save you. Absolutely. It is as filthy rags to Yahweh. But in another context, works do, do save you because they're an expression of your faith. They are showing that you are faithful to the promises. They, Yeshua will be able to stand up and say, yes, he is faithful. I saved him and he walked in faithfulness, which means he followed me. And here are his works. Here are his good deeds that he did to show that he was faithful to me. Amen. And so I think this is very helpful to make sure that we understand Isaiah 64, verse 6, in its proper context. Yes, Yahweh said in verse 5, he will meet with those who are righteous, who are faithful to the covenant. But those who are not faithful to the covenant, who have one foot in the world, who confess to be believers, but have one foot in the world and one foot in Yeshua, your righteousness, the deeds that you do are as filthy rags to him, because you do not have a dedication to him. And the promises you made to him, the confession, the vow you made to make Yeshua king and savior. Amen. He forgave you of your sins, but then you turned away. If you turn away from your righteousness, read Ezekiel chapter 18 and begin to walk in its wicked ways. He will remember your righteousness no more. Amen. So I hope this was helpful to you. Um, I tried to make this video short. It is about 30 minutes, but if you like this video and you want to hear more about the Torah, about Yeshua and how to follow him, please just hit the subscription button there on the lower right-hand side, and it'll take you to my YouTube channel where I have several videos, a few hundred videos at least, uh, and counting on how to walk in faithfulness to Yeshua. He is our only savior. He is deity, all right? His work on the cross must be what you put your faith in and that is expressed by your works. Amen. So until we meet again, everyone, shalom.